Welcome to Building the HON3 Rio Grande Southern, Volume 2. In this program, we'll cover the construction of the RICO station and the smaller buildings in the same area. Some scenery will also be built in this section. We'll show you how we built the backdrop for RICO using photocopies of the structures in the town of RICO. We'll scratch build a really neat structure of an old gasoline station of the 1930s. Our artist friend, Pat Lemmerman, will blend in some hand-painted scenery to our photo mural backdrop. Then we'll take on the task of adding the fascia board along a major section of the benchwork. The RGS ran through many timber fields, and we'll show you how we built hundreds of pine trees. The town of Rico contained a number of great structures. Since space is limited in this section, we opted to use photos of structures found in the area as a backdrop for our town of Rico. A neat looking house was found in the area and we'll scratch build that structure as well. At Ridgeway, the railroad built a seven stall roundhouse and we'll show you how that was built along with a turntable and the track arrangement in the area. Around the outside corner of the room leading to another section of the layout, we'll add the benchwork, fascia board, and the structures and scenery at Lizard Head. A bridge crosses over a small creek in this area and we'll construct that as well. Then we'll also start construction of some scenery. Because we'll have structures across the tracks at Rico, we'll need to build a small road across the river and we'll continue adding more scenery to this area. The freight station at Dolores was a long one and we didn't have enough space to build this long and deep structure so we used a photo of the prototype and scanned it into Photoshop. There were some modern cars in the scene that had to be removed, and these were cut out using the tools available in this software program. The scene was then glued to our backdrop. Photos of structures at Rico and Dolores taken years ago were scanned into Photoshop, glued with rubber cement to poster board, and then cut out. These cutouts were then glued to the photo mural backdrop. A number of the original buildings burned down over the years, so we had to use photos that were somewhat correct. We're back at our bridge installation before the big loop to Ridgeway. We've cut out the roadbed so a bridge over the creek can be installed here. Our bridge is at an angle to the joists, so when we add our abutments, they too will have to be at an angle. We've glued in one abutment and hold it in place with a clamp while we add the tie section constructed on a jig in the shop. The tie section must fit snugly between the risers and sit on the top of the abutments at each end. Scale 8x18s go under the bridge ends and sit on the top of the abutments. Okay, let's slide that tie section in place. We don't have to glue it because the whole section is built to tolerances that save us gluing the bridge to the abutments. We placed a long curvable ruler across the bridge to make sure the track is true with a roadbed at each end. We had to shim up the track at the left to make the transition perfect. Next, we're going to build some tram towers to support buckets that feed the mill at Ofer. We laid out a plan for the tower framework on some homosote and covered it with wax paper. We've already cut some pieces to build the first tower. We will build two A-frames for each tower. Here is one side of the first A-frame. Here is one of the completed towers consisting of two A-frames glued together with supporting members. Notice there are both horizontal and diagonal braces on each side. Here are three towers of different heights as per prototype. Additional bracing is necessary as the towers get higher. The small white pieces at the end of each tower crossbeam were made from a piece of round plastic. A round rod was placed in a drill press and a file was used to cut a groove in the plastic. The tram towers were next glued into the scenery. We punched some holes in the plaster to set the towers straight. The shorter tower in the rear makes the tower appear farther away than it actually is. The buckets were made by cutting some hollow tubing in half and gluing some plastic sheets to each end. We glued the half circles to some thin plastic sheet and when the glue set, 
we trimmed around the plastic sheet using the half tube as a guide. Here are three bucket assemblies with the top sheets glued in place and the other end of the bucket glued to a larger sheet. Here are three of the complete buckets. Jim is now adding the grade crossing that was a part of the Ofer area. We used some pre-stained basswood strips fastened to the ties with tacky glue. The wood stain leaves the wood weathered. We'll add some dirt to the tops once all the pieces are glued in place. We vacuumed any loose gravel to level off the road. Then a spatula was used to smooth out the road surface. 